thanks, John, for coming in um, to talk about the fundamentals of advertising, um, which is something that you have a wealth of experience in. Um, just to very briefly go over your career, um, head of advertising, publicity and PR for a major international food and agriculture giant. Uh, you then later became a creative director in an advertising agency. Um, you then had your own agency called Cooper Clark and New, where there are around 20 odd people working in the agency, if that's about right. Yeah. You then joined forces with another agency called Carrington Corner. Over the years, you've produced work for companies such as Disney, Mercedes Benz, Renault, Dimplex, Tetra, uh, and I'm sure there's many more on that list. No, I don't think so. I can't think of anything obvious at the moment. Uh, so, oh, um, Juicen. Juicen were quite big. Juicen. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> and in 2004, you had a heart attack, which meant saying goodbye to the stress of agency life mm. um, and into the stress of running a small consultancy. <laughs> yes. It was good. <laughs> good twist, I didn't know. <laughs> uh, yeah. The consultancy is called John New Creative, and that's how we know each other. Mm. Uh, we've worked together... A number of times over the last couple of years and we are also joint directors in um our own agency powerhouse yeah um so it was easy to contact you to get you in <laughs> yeah yeah not far away so have i missed anything in that intro at all for you no other than um i didn't start off uh in in in, in the in the corporate you know had to sort of climb the the, the greasy pole a bit um, um, and I started off actually as a uh, an apprentice compositor when we used to handset type. Mm. You know, there's not a computer in the place. Uh, well, that we'd recognise oh. these days. Um, and then went off, uh, then uh, scrambled away into art college uh, to to study uh, visual communication design. And uh, uh, really, that's the route I was taking, uh, the design route. But um, uh, as, as these things happen, there were some twists and curves, and uh, I ended up, uh, I ended up with the uh, uh, with an Imperial Foods, and an Imperial Group, working uh, and heading up uh, marketing communications, as you'd now call it. Just to put some sort of figures to this, these clients you had had a pretty sort of large annual spend, really, didn't they? Uh, Not mention any people specifically. Uh, any anything up to a million, um, f depending on the projects that were were, were going through, um, and it depended over what period of time as well. Um, uh, for instance, uh, when we were when we were de when I was dealing with the the motor sector, it's the the, the retail end of of, of it. So uh, over a year, you know, it could be anything between eight hundred and eight hundred thousand and a million that was being spent in those days because uh, it was all uh, regional and local papers and and even national uh, national papers and the the media. Uh, that, that was an expensive media <laughs> compared to a lot of the media that's available now other than television, radio, etc. You know, mm. broadcast medias. Yeah. But now so much of it is online. Yeah, which is uh, a bit of a new world for you, but the um, fundamentals still uh, still apply. Yes, I, I, absolutely. But it took some time mm. to, to, to realise that uh, because... When uh, when websites started to become um, uh, popular, if you, if that's a way of putting it, um, it was really the developers who ruled the roost. Uh, and every time a creative walked in, they were told, "No, you can't do that. You can't do this." And it took some time for the creators to get their heads around uh, how it was to work, and and for the and for the developers to understand that they couldn't actually rule the creative or communication side of it, um, and for the clients in the middle to understand that that was the case. Um, yeah. So it, it it took some time to get get to grips with it, and to. Uh, then start to apply what, uh, if you like, creatives understand in terms of communication and you know, gentle art of seduction and, and gentle art of persuasion, which is the right term, uh, 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 gentle art of persuasion, um, and, uh, and to apply it uh, through, uh, through online. Um, I think we're getting there, but still, uh, there's still some uh, question marks over it. Yeah. <clears throat> So, going into the sort of um, 
the power of marketing. I think, I guess the first thing to mention, which is sometimes a common misconception, is that uh, good advertising should be fact-based. Mm. You know, it's not about twisting the truth um, in any ways. Not, not, if a, not if a brand wants to sustain at the end of the day. Um, I mean, you, you just have to look at it from a consumer point of view. Um, if, you're, if you're told a load of a pack of lies, but you buy the product, product doesn't deliver, you don't buy the product again, unless there's something wrong with you, frankly. Um, uh, you, could, you could get into subtle areas like people stay with brands, even, what, even if the brand isn't quite delivering, because they want to be uh, associated with the brand. And that can happen. Uh, and that, and that's where things can get screwed up. But at the end of the day, if you uh, if you promise and under deliver, uh, you're you're, you're going to get the backfire from it. So fact factual um, factual information uh, honesty at the end of the day yeah. um, is good business. So do you have any uh, stories from uh, major brands or famous advertising stories that really give a testament to the sort of uh, the power of advertising? Yeah, well, off the top of the head, and uh, I'm staring at one of the books, uh, at Doyle Day and Bernbach. Um, I don't know which way the camera's looking yeah. at it. Um, that one. Uh, fam- very famous story. The Vol- Volkswagen, uh, this was sort of late 50s, Volkswagen coming into uh, the United States. Um, cars in the States then were like um, aircraft carriers uh, with chrome enormous things but the reliability and quality uh, was a bit suspect across the board yeah um but introducing the volkswagen beetle not only is it about quarter of the size of the average american car but it's not exactly pretty uh, compared to what the americans saw as a pretty car yeah. um so Doyle, Dane, Bernbach, and uh, and it was Bill Bernbach who was the creative director, uh, happened to be a Jew, introducing an ex-Nazi car into America. Quite an interesting story in itself. Um, but uh, Bill Bernbach actually changed the nature of advertising, changed the view. It came at it a completely different way. Advertising up to that time had been um, fairly uh, fairly passive. Um, uh, pretty car, pretty words about it. Um, Bill Bernbach took it, uh, took it somewhere else, and uh, he uh, basically, I think, he was a better, a, a better understanding of the way people, the, the way people feel uh, naturally. Um, and give you an example. Uh, so that I don't lose my track here. Um, one of the first ads uh, features just featured uh, a picture of the beetle, mm. and it says it's ugly, but it gets you there. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> and uh, and to the American market, you know that a that's going to arrest your attention. You're going to yeah. want to find out more about it. So using advertising technique to to to, to the maximum. Um, but more more importantly in this respect is the message what he was actually delivering but he didn't say it all in the headline what he was actually delivering was the uh, was the quality reliability of the car so he's actually attacking uh if you like the um uh, the known unreliability of the american car yeah there was then another ad which came came out and again just a straightforward picture of of, of the beetle and it said lemon mm. So you immediately, what are you talking about? Um, go into the copy, so he's led you into the copy because you want to read on, which again, advertising technique, uh, didn't give it all away, he's pulled you in. Um, and it explained that uh, this, was a, that this car had a scrape on the glove compartment. Yeah. So it didn't pass quality control. Mm. So it's a lemon, it went to the back and it mm. had to have a new, uh, a, a, a new glove compartment mm. uh, fitted or whatever it was that was uh, that, that, that was wrong with it and come through. So that said something about the quality standards. Yeah. Um, and this was this is a whole series a whole mm. series of work. What happened was that it launched VW into the American market. Mm. Beyond that, the uh, the VW camper van, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. He opened the door for it. Yeah. But as you can see. 
uh, his his advertising technique wasn't all pretty and uh, and praising praising the product. It's very self-effacing in, mm. in, in 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 certain respects. You know, it's ugly, but it gets you there. Mm. But he's actually delivering a positive. So he, he, he got there's a there's a principle in advertising called uh, 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 ADA, mm. which it stands for attention, interest, desire, and action. Mm. And if you and, and it's as old as, uh, as, as as well, I think it's been used since God was a lad. In in, in truth, um, uh, in 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 the business, uh, and it still it, it still works today. So you've got to get the attention of people. Yeah, you've got to get their interest. It's no good use, just using gimmicks. Yeah, you know, and then people turn turn the page or or or, or click and 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 move on. Uh, on 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 a site, uh, you've got to get their interest. You um, you've got to get them to a point. You've got to get people to a point where, yeah, well, I'd like to know more about that, or I want one, or in other words, generate the kind of desire, uh, yeah. desire for it, and then action. Um, you've then got to explain to them what they need to do to acquire it or uh, to take advantage of it. Mm. And if you apply that to most uh, most advertising when, when it's created and say does it does it fulfil those that that criteria, then it's more likely it's more likely to work. Mm. And yeah, it's got to be a strong idea. It's got to be a strong product. Um, but you, if you apply it in a in a press ad in a magazine or in a website or online communication the mm. same that same formula uh, mm. will apply and bill bernbach did all of that yeah and uh, uh, and so in the advertising business we have a lot to to, to thank him for yeah hmm. so there's probably some other quite big famous ones before we get into it so i know there was um mm. one that i read in a book that you lent me mm. Which uh, we don't have here because it's in my house. Um, mm. uh, which is the Rolls Royce um, advert, and it was also a very famous um, sort of advertising war, I guess, between um, Avis and Hertz. Yeah, um, the car hire yeah. people. These are kind of legends, really, of of, of, of advertising. Yeah, right? yeah. Uh, Briefly go over one of your favourite one about those, if you if yeah. you, if you can. Yeah, well, I, you know, I enjoy doing it. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, again, it was uh, th- 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 this was um, uh, David Ogilvy uh, who um, uh, set up his agency, a, a Brit who set up his agency in uh, in New York. Um, David had uh, been a an Argus salesman. <laughs> He'd been worked in research, etc. Um, but he found his he, he found his niche, if you like, as a copywriter. Mm. Um, and uh, Rolls Royce uh, Rolls Royce wanted some advertising uh, in, in 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 America. I don't think it was to launch it, but it's certainly to. And, and I can't remember the basis of it really. Uh, but they, they wanted some advertising. Now, what do you say about a Rolls Royce? Mm. Um, you know, it is and, and and was the most superior, most superior motor car mm. uh, that money could buy uh, for all sorts of reasons. Um, but and David was was uh, in a corner to find, you know, the killer, the killer ad, if you like, um, and uh, the final ad. Uh, which I, I, I think was absolutely uh, beautiful and so simple. Um, well, before I go on about that, um, in the creative process, mm. you you um, you're going through ideas, uh, idea after idea after idea, uh, and probably the waste paper bin is full of them, mm. uh, and and the, and, the, and the trash in, on, on the computer is is is, is full of them, um, but. Uh, what's required is to what they call uh, take a leap. Um, you perhaps work through, work through, and then then there's the uh, mm. the golden moment, if you like, the eureka yeah. moment where the idea the idea gels. And there's been a lot of talk about how that arrives, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, uh, and and you know, is there a formula? Uh, I have to say, I've I've no idea. I've had those moments myself. 
in, in, in a smaller way than David Ogilvy, and I know what it means, but I couldn't, I couldn't tell you how it arose. So where this idea came from would seem to be, with uh, the, the, the Rolls-Royce idea, would seem to be totally practical, that you would imagine he'd, all he had to do was to go and sit and ride in the car. Um, but it wouldn't be quite like that uh, because uh, because he wouldn't have formed the words that mm. made it so powerful. And it said at, I think it's at 30 miles an hour, the loudest noise you'll hear in a Rolls Royce is the clock ticking. Mm. What does that tell you about a Rolls Royce? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so those words wouldn't have formed as he sat there. I know exactly how. You know, and it's it would not have just had a really loud worked. clock. You know? <laughs> 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 well, you got a point. I never asked the question. Um, <laughs> but uh, I remember reading reading that ad and thinking, "Oh, I'd love to write lines like that." You know, yeah. the, 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 the there's no of... there's no fat on that. There's no meat at all. It's just really stripped down isn't it yeah you know you can't take any word out of it no and and there was no fancy shots of the rolls royce in the ad uh it it, it was a a nice shot uh but it was just straightforward it wasn't trying to sell at you uh Mm. which is uh one of the um crimes of 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 poor advertising Mm. it was actually attracting you to it Mm. um and uh, uh, and, and the other one you mentioned, Avis, uh, which is uh, which is one of the classics, and anybody yeah. in advertising will say, "Oh no, not again." But uh, it's worth it's worth saying because there's a lot of um, there's a lot of companies out there that are me too that are competing. Yeah, um, and uh, Avis and Hertz were out there. Hertz was the market leader. Yeah, and Avis was, if you like, the the, the 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 number two. So the kind of advertising that could have been and probably was before this uh, mm. put out there uh, would be, um, you know, Avis is great, Avis is wonderful. But w- w- how they won, how how they won people's hearts as well as minds, mm. uh, is that they said, yeah, we're number two, but uh, and because we're number two, we try harder. Mm. You know, as human beings, we kind of recognise that. Yeah. We, you know, we 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 we, we associate, and uh, uh, and uh, uh, it has a re- resonance to mm. to it, and a very powerful advertising. I'm not sure whether they became number one. Mm. <laughs> I, I honestly can't remember, uh, but it uh, it did them no harm whatsoever, mm. uh, 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 and they became, if you like, they out shouted their competitor. Yeah. Right, with, and they had those uh, series of funny adverts as well that went went with them. When I think there's a guy who's asleep um, the night yeah. before he's getting a uh, hiring his car or something, and the um, Avis chap opens the window where he's sleeping, and he's on a ladder or something, and he's reminding him that everything's you know still in check and still on time yeah. And, yeah. and things like that. So um, a whole sort of campaign to sort of really back up just this one line. Mm that they've come up with yeah um yeah. and you don't have the power of the internet in front of you i do and i just typed in the rolls royce ticking clock so i'm sure it was 30 or 60 but it says mm. 60 here at 60 oh right before. it's going a bit faster than i thought <laughs> so which is even even more you know yeah. powerful i guess yeah really yeah you know um but they, these are classic ads of of, of kind of yesteryear mm. um and uh, I could be accused of oh yeah, but you know it's that, that that's yesteryear. There wasn't so much marketing noise out there as there is now. Um, you you uh, you you have to fight for your for your corner far far more these days, and mm. and that's and that's true. Um, but the fundamentals, and that's what we're talking about. The fundamentals of what grabs people's attention and imagination, or the the the, the fact that you've got to. Mm. Um, it still apply yeah. uh, uh, right across the board and I think uh, we still admire um, we still admire ads that have humour uh, ads that really stand out the kind of quality of production when we see TV commercials we also ignore those that don't, don't hit us mm. not all advertising not all advertising is great yeah 
uh, in, in, in truth, and not not everything that one creates is a is, is a masterpiece. There's some what I would call jobbing ads that have just got to do a, a communication job. So it's nice to pick out the hero ads because they kind of shook the world a little bit. Mm. Um, but there's a there's an everyday job to do yeah. in promoting uh, businesses and, and 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 products that may not uh, may not. Um, may not uh knock you knock you for six when it mm. when it comes out um so there are but there are still some fundamentals to apply to to communicate the information that's required mm. um and i think david ogilvy who is my hero really um was totally against uh, what i would call probably what he would call kind of gimmick advertising yeah. You know, you are imparting information, useful information, and if useful information is then converted into a purchase in, in some way, then you've done your job. Mm. You know, and it is a job to do. Yeah, yeah. So, modern, kind of the modern day, really. So, um, just with the sheer amount of content that's out there, mm. the sheer amount of channels and that, um, means that whilst there are some fantastic pieces of work out there, um, that you see from companies like Audi and things like that and, mm. and just adverts um, that could almost be films essentially um, mm. and that have really lovely storytelling um, there's also a lot of sort of junk out there mm. and we're probably two frustrating people to watch TV with now <laughs> me being a, a video guy <laughs> yeah, yeah, um, quite. me being an advertising guy um, but um there's would you say there's sort of a lot of um not in proper use but um maybe a bit uneducated advertising mm. out there and marketing and, and you often see a lot of p people who don't you know have their basic proposition together and things like that mm. um which are really the, the the foundations that you need to then go forward really i yeah. know we you've been helping us with um some of our strap lines and things like that now we're working really closely together and and it really has shown that you know get your proposition first and then mm. everything kind of follows from there mm. which is why it's important today for us talking about the sort of the fundamentals of it um but you know in your words today um what are we kind of looking at really what do you kind of see when you when what's mm. out there um yeah there's some good some good points you make there um i I think uh, if I start from here and say one of the one of the fundamentals that I um, that I had to learn because uh, I came from a, a kind of visual visual background and therefore I was always looking at the kind of style of of, of, of ads and things of that nature and, uh, and more more graphic and it took some time working with top line copywriters to really understand that uh, it was about the message. At, at the end of the day, in in advertising, yeah. if you're doing graphic design, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, there are different criteria. But in in advertising, uh, it's it's about the message, and uh, and and to get a strong message, yeah. you've got to get down to uh, a proposition that stack stacks up, yeah. and that proposition has got to be strong. So there's got to be some homework to find out what it is that people are most likely to want mm. and, and and respond to, yeah. Um, and once you, you've perhaps established that, and that might be by research, uh, looking at uh, uh, looking at the pattern of purchase of, mm. of, of, of products, etc., and drawing some conclusions, and the, then it's down to uh, identifying what what it was termed to me as single-minded proposition, mm. and. Uh, I, I, I've done a little bit of work on this, um, and uh, 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 but I, I stole the idea from a very good friend and, a, and an excellent creative. Um, but uh, in order to get to the single-minded proposition, there's a little story that I tell. Um, uh, th this all applies to yeah. ev ev everything across the board, so I'm, I'm not sort of taking you away from 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 the central theme of this but uh sometimes if you go and ask a client so okay what's the what's your strongest selling proposition very often you'll get a list hmm. and it will be oh great colors fantastic range and 
Uh, we're, we're really, really good with customers. You know, r really, r really friendly with customers. Um, oh, uh, price is uh, very, very competitive, etc. And you'll get end up with a list. Mm. So uh, the idea is that all of these things are then written onto tennis balls. Mm. Right. Well, the client is telling you this, mm. uh, and you perhaps pop it into I don't know waste paper bin or something like that. And at the end of it, you say, "Well, that's absolutely terrific. It sounds like you've got an awful lot uh, to, to 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 say." So I'm now going to say it, and you throw mm. all the tennis balls <laughs> out, of, out of the bin <laughs> at the guy and s see how many he catches. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> then he's got a little bit of an insight into the job that you've got to do. Yeah, because you can't just throw everything. Uh, everything at people uh, in yeah. that few seconds that they've got to kind of retrieve it mm. in either a mag or in, online or whatever. Yeah. Uh, so you've got to identify what is the strongest proposition, mm. the single-minded strongest proposition, and go for that. Yeah, all the other stuff will be mentioned in the in the communication, but that's the that, that, that's the big thing to do. It's a good and, uh, metaphor, really. It's a good like analogy. Unless you yeah. are actually turning up to meetings with a pack of tennis balls, then people should uh, people should be careful. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I often do actually, <laughs> and I've been thrown out of many a <laughs> many a meeting. But um, the <laughs> the uh, the thing that I, I, therefore, I often see is that uh, the, the proposition isn't terribly strong. Mm -hmm. So where the proposition isn't very strong, you've either got singers or dancers or some sort of uh, some sort of distraction, you know, to try and hype it up. Mm. Um, and uh, that's not the kind of advertising that, uh, that 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 I want to work with, you know, because that means you haven't actually got a message. Yeah. You've got something to put out there. Hmm. And uh, 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 moving on just a little bit, there's quite a lot of Me Too, Me Too products. And, hmm. uh, uh, and I, uh, to illustrate a point, um, there was a, a window company, I won't mention it, that was advertising on, on, on television. Hmm. And it was very hard sell. It was kind of tongue-in-cheek. You know, you'll, but it, you'll get three for two and, 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 hmm. and, and, and a guy's sort of punching it. And I thought at the time, is that actually working? It, it, because it, it, it was on for a while. You know, hmm. it was on for a few years. Um, so it must be working somewhere down the line. But it's, it was uh, horrible advertising. Absolutely absolutely awful. Um, hmm. uh, it, it, I wouldn't buy from them, frankly. Hmm. Um, and I was delighted to see that uh, about a year ago, it all changed to, to working with the fundamentals of how you actually attract people to your product and how you inform them. Yeah. And uh, or, or that ADA principle, if you like, coming mm. back into. Yeah, they used the ADA principle before uh, to, to grab your attention, but it actually was repugnant. Yeah. Um, and, uh, you know, advertising has a responsibility mm. uh, to, to inform and to a certain degree entertain, mm. particularly on telly. Yeah. Yeah. Um, mm. Uh, and this was uh, working against the grain for me. So mm. I was delighted to see that, uh, if, if you like, the fundamentals had come in, been applied, and uh, that the whole brand and the whole product needs its logo to looking at, I'll, I'll, I'll be honest, but uh, has, has been uh, transformed mm. um, and now feels more like a market leader in, yeah. in a way and far more trustworthy. Yeah. And mm. reliable, uh, mm. etc., et, et and all those good things that a brand should be doing. So um, we've got basically number one because mm. I, I quite want to sort of itemise these, so it's mm. sort of easy to follow. So we've got number one, which is a single-minded selling proposition. Yeah, really. yeah. Uh, as you've detailed here. Mm. So um, just coming back to that one because I know we've moved on to verge uh, two, but I can mm. shuffle this around so it all makes sense. Yeah. Um, so number one, the single-minded selling proposition. How do you actually advise, you know, people whether they're startups mm. or whether they've been around for ages but haven't properly mm. tackled their marketing? Mm. How do you actually sort of briefly suggest that they find their brand proposition? Mm. Um, is it possible for them to do it, or do you really need someone like yourself to to come in? You know, how can they make a start? Well, if they can do it, that's great, and then you've got a then you've probably got the brief. Mm. But if they haven't got it, they're going to need some help. And yeah. I've found that uh, most 
shall we say smaller companies mm. you know uh, smaller doesn't mean worse <laughs> it just no. means they're smaller and perhaps don't have the resources um they probably need the help a little more than more than others and um i mean somebody like uh disney for instance when we were working with disney they told you not only what their strongest proposition was but what the reaction they wanted from their target market because they carried out so much study yeah of their target market mm. and and that's what it's really down to mm. actually understanding your, your marketplace okay. and what's likely to trigger so yeah. you've got to go through some processes you've got to go through through marketing but basically mm. if is it safe to say that you know if realistically looking at your own strap line or proposition if anyone else can say that then it's probably not a good brand proposition really mm. if you really think about it if you're mm. um for example, you make chairs and tables and things like that, mm. and your strap line is, you know, bespoke chairs and tables mm. um, or something like that, then you haven't quite found it. No, you've got to try and differentiate yourself for the sake of the consumer mm. who's got to make a choice at the yeah. end of the day. Um, and as you know, I work very often on, uh, shall we say, the brand promise, um, mm. uh, 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 which is which is a tough a tough thing to do sometimes um, because very very often you come across what I call me too businesses. You mm. know they're offering as you as you're implying that they're, they're, they're offering similar similar product, probably at sort of similar price, mm. uh, etc. There's enough room in the market, but how do they uh, how do they stand out? How yeah. do they appeal Why to their mm. audience? And it's finally. Uh, there are various ways, but one of the ways I try and work is to say you can't have the total market, mm. but you can have your slice of that market. Now, what is that slice of the market? What's 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 going to be the appeal to you that's not going to be the appeal to the competitors? Mm. And can we root down to what that might be? And your customer base is the first place to start, and then uh, some research into uh, research into that. Your own experience as a as, as a business, mm. um, and uh, r rather than the kind of rhetoric of what you think you are as a mm. business and what you think you're doing, actually start to examine it properly. You mm. know what's what's bringing in the uh, what's bringing in the the, the cash. <laughs> Yeah, uh, yeah. At, at, at the end of the day, and if they haven't done any study of that, then perhaps set about it. Um, mm. You can do that through actually communicating. You can actually research the market by putting tests out there to see what actually responds. Um, yeah. So you might have three messages, mm. all carefully constructed, to see if see which one pulls most you know there's all that all that kind of work that can be done yeah um but it's it's still trying to arrive at that 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 mm. strong proposition yeah and, and and that proposition can change you know you're not stuck with it for life it may be as, as a as a business it may be that uh things change Mm. The market changes, your offer changes, so the proposition has to change. Mm. You know, you're not, it's, it's not the proposition for the business and that's it. Yeah, yeah. And if, you're, um, if you are a, a sort of a me too business or you have a product that is a bit of a me too product, mm. um, you know, sometimes it, it's, it's not easy to tell people that have put their life and soul into this product that, you mm. know, actually it is a Me Too product. They think it's unique because it might have these certain smaller features or yeah. something like that. But sometimes delivering this uh, sort of message to them, you can almost ruffle a couple of feathers in, in giving people the truth that, you know, it mm. is actually the same thing. And it's not saying that, you know, we can't do what, what we wanted, but it's saying, right, okay, mm. it is a Me Too product. Now we need to understand that before we can move forward because that changes how we, how we do everything. Mm. I mean, you can't have something that's, you know, slightly unique. It's either unique or it's, or it's mm. not, really. Um, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. It might have some whistles and bells that mm. uh, that, that that differentiate it, mm. and you'd always look for those. And but you have to look at them uh, and say, but do they appeal? You yeah, know, are, are, are these uh, kind of deal winners, if you like? Um, uh, but uh, in direct answer to, you, to, to 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 your question, yes, uh, I. I I'd like to think that I don't face the, a, a client on the other side of the table and say, "Well, actually, you're a me too 
and uh, and quite frankly, you're wasting your time. Mm. Um, <laughs> obviously, there's a job to be yeah. done. Yeah. Um, and so I, I try and build up a case, a bit like a barrister <laughs> in, 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 in court to a certain degree, yeah. to build up a case that and undeniably they have to say, well, that's a fair point. Hmm. And if that job's done properly and, and, and well, usually uh, and, and, uh, you know, reasoned people hmm. can kind of see it. Yeah. Um, I'm not saying that I've been 100% successful because you do get people that are stuck in, uh, are, are stuck in a place. I'll give, you, I'll give you an example. I was doing some work for a company that printed um, digital uh, images onto, uh, onto glass and other, uh, yeah. and uh, quite clearly, uh, they had different markets, uh, but they wanted one website to deal with everything, which is quite reasonable. Yeah. Um, but they were dealing at one end with engineers and at the other end who were dealing with architects, for instance, and in yeah. between there were interior designers. So I created a, a website that would welcome you, whoever you were. Mm. In other words, if you were an architect, you were going to be taken into this room and be given, uh, if you like, a demonstration of the product online and, and all the information that you would require. Yeah. And uh, the same if you were in construction or, 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 or other, other areas. Um, uh, it might be a retailer, for mm. instance. But this is a way of the company demonstrating that, that they knew your problem and they designed... A product to meet your requirements yeah, yeah. okay it wasn't just a, a universal because there were differences in in in, in the requirements but uh, uh i went through the whole process and put the whole creative uh, um, proposal together and the rationale for it and the owner turned around and said he hadn't seen such a big load big load of rubbish in in all his life and what uh. the hell had I been doing with my life? <laughs> <laughs> Which um, I did question <laughs> at the time and wondered why I was in advertising when I was facing something like this. Mm. Um, but it, it was completely rational to me. But for his own reasons, which were never explained, you know, he couldn't, uh, he, he couldn't see it, couldn't abide it, and thought it was ridiculous. Um, you, uh, so, you know, you're not going to win every, every, every yeah. time, even with... Uh, shall we say, building a case, uh, wearing the wig. Yeah, exactly. And I suppose this is because when you, um, when you come across uh, maybe an MD who's one of the original um, sort of developers or engineers of of the mm. product, mm. they see the product in a completely different way oh, yeah. to how mm. um, the audience are going to see it and how the public are going to see it. And mm. so, you know, they're focusing on, and it's, it's a problem you often have to deal with, and especially also with making videos. Mm. To them, it's, you know, a massively important feature that, you know, you can change the color of this, you know, mm. that could be whatever color you want, mm. um, but it might not actually be something that's that's relevant to the video, to the target audience, you know. Yeah. Um, and so you're, you're often almost dealing with different personalities and jobs that see things in completely different ways, so it's probably sort of juggling quite a lot in that sense. Well, of course, over the years, and you can see that my uh, my hair isn't as black as yours. Uh, <laughs> over the years, I'm getting a few <laughs> Yeah, I'm not surprised. <laughs> it's working um, with you. <laughs> <laughs> but the, uh, the, the I, I think the thing is that uh, that you know you're walking into that mm. kind of potential scenario. Mm. Um, and that someone's given birth to this mm. baby of theirs. Yeah. Um, it's particularly uh, prevalent in uh, kind of manufacturing, uh, you know, in engineering, for instance, where somebody's invented something. And, uh, and I respect that, mm. and I fully understand that. But my job is to make somebody, somebody that doesn't know anything about this want it. Yeah. Um, and they perhaps don't share that uh, commitment and, and and belief in it, mm. um, and uh, so I've got to bridge bridge that gap, and that's where yeah that's where the tensions can build up, um, and and I've been in that 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 kind of situation. Um, so again, it's uh, the, the the ways of doing this um, uh, going to the extreme of actually carrying out. Uh, a little bit of research of prospective customers and mm. facing the client with that 
Um, but yeah. not to, excuse me, I have to say, but to respect that they perhaps put a superb product together. You know, these mm. people are not fools and they shouldn't be treated as fools. And suddenly Mr. Advertising Man comes in and has all the magic answers. <laughs> yeah. You know, it isn't like that. Mm. Um, but it is trying to get them to uh, put different lenses on and see it see it differently. Mm. Um, and to uh, hear other voices other than their own. Mm. Um, so that they can actually look at it from the outside in, mm. um, and uh, and it's it, it's trying to get to get to that point because uh, my job isn't to how can I put it to a certain extent isn't isn't well, to a great extent isn't to communicate to the client it's to communicate to his prospective clients. Mm. <laughs> That's a completely different uh, yeah. different beast who. Um, uh, doesn't know the company, doesn't know its track record, mm. doesn't know uh, doesn't know what the product can do. It's, uh, totally unaware of the benefits of it, um, and uh, and doesn't know whether it can trust the company. Yeah, uh, and, and and all of those things we've got to overcome mm. uh, to to a, to a new prospect where the brand isn't known. Mm. Um, so that's quite a quite a hefty job to do. Mm. Um, and so if the client thinks that because they've made it everybody's going to want it to be perfectly honest uh, that's a rarity mm. that's an absolute rarity um, and there are others on the market anyway mm. so uh, I think in truth we're talking about extremes mm. here um, when you're talking to most people I think most people uh, most business people understand that they've got to market their product yeah um, and that uh, if they don't have those expertise themselves, they've got to take some advice. Mm. Um, we have a responsibility on our side of the on our side of the fence to not go in with with silly damn gimmicks or whatever, but to do a job of work. Mm. Um, and uh, it's. <laughs> Uh, it's it's not the award winning ads that necessarily win the uh, win business for a client. Mm. You know, we might admire them in the industry and fantastic idea, but did it actually do any good? Yeah, it's a it's it's it's, it's a bit like uh, the you know the major music festivals for for, for to, to to feed feed Africa, mm. but uh, it made an awful lot of noise, and I'm sure a lot of people benefited from it in the music industry, uh, mm. but it didn't do an awful lot of good. I understand now for Africa. Mm. Um, uh, a bit like some advertising um, yeah. can be uh, can seem to be absolutely superb, superbly shot, etc. But it didn't actually move the product, and that's yeah. the job that we have to do at the end mm. of the day. That's what we're paid for. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And you're finding a lot of that. Um, you're finding a lot of that that work in in the ability to do that in video now which is one of the reasons we we work close together yes it's a pretty good format for being able to deliver a sort of a tone a mm. pace mm. um you know sounds and oh. as, as well as all the kind of visuals and, and the colors yeah. and things that you use it's um it's a it's really good sort of uh sort of way to get information across really at the bare bones of it but there's so much you can mm. do with it well, it's such a fantastic story uh, storytelling medium, mm. um, and you don't have to, to be honest. You don't have to put people through reading a whole load of text yeah. <laughs> to get yeah. there, um, and uh, it's an entertaining. Uh, it's it's many things, but uh, that, that, that I, I could waffle on about for for ages and put the poor viewer to sleep. Um, uh, just demonstrating that video doesn't work actually, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, you can you, you you can tell a story in pictures and words in an ad, online in a, in a in a in a, uh, in a blog in, in 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 on a website, but the moving picture gives you so much to work with, um, and uh, it's my favourite my favourite medium. Mm. Uh, I, I have to say, I, I must admit, I, um, I, I, I still like press ads. Um, I, mm. I, I, I still have a um, uh, a passion a passion for that because that's where I came from and that's the, the craft that I learned. But moving on to uh, moving on to the moving image, uh, mm. it gives me far more to to, to, to work with. It's more yeah. complex. Mm. 
you know, there's a hell of a lot more to getting it right. Mm. Um, so, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's challenging yeah. at the same time to get something that's, say, a minute long, mm. um, which has packed in an awful lot of information. You've got to work hard to distill and distill mm. and distill to, to, to kind of get there. Yeah. But the combination of you working as a, as a director and me working as a kind of storyteller so that uh, I might... Um, I might write a story and you're going to tell me which is the best way to actually shoot that, how to achieve that story by by yeah. other means. It's a great process, as we both there, know. There's so many elements to, i.e., you know, what kind of rig you have the camera on, um, mm. what kind of lighting you have. Yeah. So many elements that, you know, it almost can feel like an art when they all come together mm. um, and when you can put them all together. Mm. Um, really but anyway that's the grizzly advert over John was paid <laughs> <laughs> yeah, to say I'll that I'll take the money later <laughs> <laughs> use video <laughs> uh, um, okay so um, so moving on so uh, our third point in this first one was single minded selling proposition mm. second was you know what if you if you don't have a major point of differentiation mm. third point it's all advertising um, why do companies think a website, a blog, um, video are not advertising uh, activities? Yes, mm. um, we tend to uh, draw these big lines between or put barriers between these things. But at the end of the day, you're promoting a product or a service mm. at, at the end of the day or an organization or a charity, whatever it might be, but you're promoting it. And whether it's, um, whether it's through, frankly, PR, and I've headed up PR, um, uh, what was I doing heading up PR as promoting the business? Mm. Um, and uh, and so these these uh, very strong boundaries between these areas, like uh, an advertising man probably wouldn't be right to to to, to uh, write mm. blogs. Uh, I understand that to a degree because there is some there's a certain style to blogs that has to be uh, has to be understood. And and, uh, uh, and and the presentation and the skill that goes into that is slightly different from, say, writing an ad, mm -hmm. but 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 it's still all promoting a product. Mm -hmm. So uh, what I uh, what I'm trying to get to is d because you're a blog writer, you're in advertising. <laughs> is what I'm saying. Because you're in PR, you're still in advertising. I'm. Uh, I come from an advertising background, um, uh, as, as I've explained. So obviously, I'm deeply in advertising. But so are an awful lot of other people that mm. are in, in, involved in other areas. You're a video maker for um, uh, sometimes for products or services. You're you're perhaps even making videos a training, but you're promoting something at the same time, mm. and you're communicating a message. So we're all in this in this advertising advertising business. Um, within the marketing, sorry, sorry. Just, <laughs> within within the within the market uh, within the marketing uh, landscape. Yeah, um, and uh, I get a little bit. I, th I think I'm saying this because the, you 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 now get this feeling that sort of advertising is outmoded. Mm. <laughs> advertising is yesterday, mm. or it's just for the telly. Yeah, and but yet there are a lot of people involved in producing advertising, mm. and, uh, and and probably don't recognise it as such. Um, yeah. So it's a bit of a uh, bit of a hobby horse, and there are the, those out there that would argue with me. Mm. Well, argue with me. <laughs> <laughs> well, the um, no matter what kind of technology is involved between the 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 start, the the fact is you're going from you're speaking to people. And yeah. that's still where it's always ending up, you know, no matter what kind of means of technology is going through, yeah, you've right. still got to appeal to the kind of brain. Really. Yeah, yeah. Um, so so uh, it always applies, really. You yeah. Know. Um, so, it's, it, it, again, it's the old Ada principle. You've got to get their attention. Um, so it's a newspaper article. You're going to write a headline mm. and put a picture. Yeah. You know, you've got to get their interest. So... Uh, you've got to then write it so that you would generate that interest. If you're selling something, then yes, there has to, that has to conjure up a sense of desire. Mm. You know, I'm, I, I, I know it's a bit formulaic, but it, it, it does it, it does work. And then, uh, do you want to do anything about it? Mm. <laughs> and if you do, this is what you do. Yeah, action. Yeah. So uh, it it all 
it mm. all seems to fall in. I, I, I'm sure there are those out there that might um, uh, of a higher academic um, uh, understanding than me uh, might argue might argue with that. But I, I just see whether it's a, a sign on the road that's saying eggs, <laughs> or, um, or, or or an article in our business press which is um, uh, discussing a, fin- a financial services company. It's all mm. advertising. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. Um, That's a big surprise, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> um, so, uh, and ad- good advertising can come in many different forms and things. One thing I was just going to touch on, which I've sh- mm. shown you before, is there's a really great advertisement going on in the tube at the moment, um, mm. which is just a screenshot of a text message that um, mm. just says, "Hi, Dave, can you do me an ad for a uh, for a." Um, a music evening I'm putting on um, mm. and this guy's just like yeah sure and he's just like yeah just send me the details and so he just texts through the details like it's going to be here here and here mm. and Dave just is just like yeah done and then just said so it's just a screenshot of the text and then they've just plastered it all over the tubes and everything right. and it's just it's such a simple um, but clever mm. way of advertising like you say mm. it doesn't all need to be pretty pictures and things no. like that it's just you know uh, um, but the message yeah yeah. Yeah. Um and if you can make people laugh on a commute to work, um yeah. then that's powerful. Well, years ago they used to say that humor didn't work. Um mm. uh this is sort of the 19th century, I think, but um and then research discovered that it does. And one of the biggest um one of the biggest assets of humor is recall. Mm. One of the w- one of the main aims of advertising uh, uh is uh, is is recall because people don't buy unless it's direct marketing. They don't buy off the page just because yeah. you've read a, 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 a read an ad or seen something online for a car. You're not necessarily going to leap out at that particular moment. Mm. You're perhaps going to look at other cars. Yeah. But if you've left something that is easy to recall to retrace your steps, mm. then that's going to help mm. uh, in the sales process. Yeah. So. Uh, I hadn't mentioned that on the, on, on the way through, but really important, fundamental. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, so, so yeah, everything is, is advertising, really. Social mm. media, you know, it's, it's all forms of it, and all, yeah. it all needs to be considered. Mm. And again, that can all be influenced by that initial brand promise. Yeah. You know, in a way. Mm. Okay. Uh, number five out of, out of six we've got here. so people don't like to be sold at um mm. Mm. which okay. still seems to um i can tell not a lot not everyone seems to understand that no. because i s- still see a lot of adverts that do exactly that yes um and uh it it uh, i'll qualify it by saying it depends on 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 context it depends on the product to 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 a degree um but uh, and it depends on the culture. Um, the, the, the Americans um, don't have the same view of sales as as we have as a culture. Mm. You know, sales a salesperson in this country is uh, has been regarded, and I hate to say it, as slightly lower grade, mm. and in in America, highly respected. Mm. You know, people that can sell are are are, are, are seen as um, artists in their own right in in, in many respects. So th- those cultural differences apply in this context. Yeah. Um, so if you, as I, I understand it, and and the same applies still in America in certain quarters. You know, in, in certain certain parts of their culture. To be fair, as Bill Birnbach, um, uh pointed out. Um, in fact, he. he it was him that coined the phrase. Um, mm. uh, if if you if you uh, <laughs> if you treat the the reader as a fool, you're the fool. Mm. <laughs> um, in other words, that you think you can sell them some something by just telling them that they should buy it. Yeah. You know, being being simplistic about it all. You've got to um, you. <laughs> uh, these are all all kind of cliches to to a degree, but you know, cli- cliches, as as Ogilvy said, um, are, are born of truth. Mm. And the truth of the matter is that you got to win somebody's mind. Um, you've got to get them to a point where they say, "Yeah, that makes sense." 
Yeah, I can see that. Mm. Uh, yeah, I believe that. Uh, so there's a rational, um, uh, there's a rational side of it, and then there's the emotional side of it. Mm. Um, so you've got to win heart and mind is, is is where I'm going with this. You've got to get to a point where, having got that information, um, you you've got to also uh, get a person to to to, to uh, you know your target audience to uh, say yeah I like that. Mm. That's an emotional thing, or I don't like that. That's mm. an emotional. Re response and you've got to get to, to to that point because finally they've got to make a decision yeah. and that decision will usually be emotionally based it might be based on the factual information that's been provided but it might also be that you like the color mm -hmm. which uh uh i've done quite a lot in motor retail and uh, uh, uh <laughs> many people will buy a car for its style and its colour, particularly the ladies, and I'm not being chauvinist about this. You know, colour is would seem to be more important than mm. than necessarily to, to to the male. So when in a car showroom, and I think it's a very good test test case, they, they, they'll know about the MPH, they'll know about its high high speed, its economy, its you know, etc., 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 etc. But the car might finally be purchased because it was a lovely red. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, all the other things had to be kind of there. It's not as though you threw all of the other things away, but the final decision was made on on, mm. on that, and it's been recorded and researched that mm. that, that that was the case. Um, so there were all of those things, uh, all of those things going. What was the question? <laughs> <laughs> um, but it's interesting. Um, the when you say the the, sh the chauvinist, because especially um, mm. in in today's world, with with advertising and, and with video, depending on uh, whether you need a male or female voiceover, but not also mm. just gender, but also age um, and race and things like that, it's um, it all comes into play. Yeah, and sometimes you have to. I imagine you've had to say a lot of things at meetings that you know might have of course defense because mm. at the end of the day yeah you mostly yeah um <laughs> a good example would be um the sort of the the kinder surprise adverts mm. um you know um and they have a boy playing with the with the with the cars and the, the mm. things like that and the rockets and they have the girl the little girl mm. in it playing with the pink ponies and things like that yeah. um and you know they I suppose what some people might expect nowadays is that they try to, you know, say, well, actually, that might not necessarily be always the case. And it's yeah. not. Um, but you mm. you have to um, appeal to the masses, you know, in, mm. in advertising. And, and you have to, um, you know, if you might have to, at some point, use female voiceover to appeal to the, to the, the majority of the target audience and mm. use male to appeal to some of the other, other target audience, depending what industry or your the company's in what sector yeah. um so that's probably another one of the mm. sort of <laughs> challenges that, that, you, that you have to go it's, through it, it, it is a uh, it can be a major uh, consideration um i try and w w work work through it that again i'm looking for delivering the message mm. and delivering the message to the person or people if you like that are uh, are, are the ones that are going to be receptive to it that we want to be receptive to it yeah. um, and so that's what uh, drives drives me um, and if that message is uh, how can I put it um, if that message is true and honest mm. um, then it the, the gender issue um, might play a part but sometimes actually won't because the message would apply to either gender, mm. whether it's we're featuring a female, male, a child, whatever. I mean, one of the worst things I feel is happening, just as an aside at the moment, is uh, a lot of advertising on television is featuring children mm. trying to be grown-ups. Mm. Now, that might be appealing to some, but it winds me up no end. Uh, I, I find that they're coming over as being precocious. There isn't a, what we used to call an R factor attached to it because of the way it's been done, because it feels so artificial. 
Mm. It doesn't feel natural. You know, some commercials will feel natural. It, it, where I'm coming to, uh, to join those two thoughts up, is that if it feels natural and genuine, mm. then I don't think you're going to have that kind of... Re- uh, you, you're not going to have the kind of rejection unless there's somebody from the very far right or very far left that's mm. got some sort of... Uh, yeah. But the, the, the general middle audience that you're perhaps aiming... Uh, you're, you're talking to mm. are going to get the message. They're not going to see those other, other things because of the honesty and and the uh, the sincerity, the naturalness of it of, yeah. of it all. Um, does that answer that question? No, it does. It's, no, it certainly does. Yeah. Um, and the original point we're on to get back to it was was people don't like to be sold out and talking about the, the gentle art of persuasion mm. and Ada. And things like that that was mm. that was where we started from <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah. It probably was <laughs> <laughs> um so um and winning heart and mind and anything and everything like that but yeah. uh we've we've gone over to that to a good detail um mm. right oh, i think we're uh, confused enough people yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um so number six poor brief poor work agency how important is it to create a good brief if you're working in marketing and you're bringing in external supplies suppliers to um, produce work the brief that you're looking for will Mm. tell you enough about uh, what the uh, what the main message needs to be yep who it's aimed at, hmm. something of their kind of uh, behaviour, because you're going to aim the message at them, but you want to engage with them. You want to, uh, in some cases, you might want to, uh, if you like, mirror their lifestyle or their situation in some way, so that they can register it. So you do need a little, mo- uh, you know, some information around the profile about about the target target audience. Hmm. Um, in consumer terms, that might be that the target uh, target market is females uh, eighteen to twenty five. Mm. So, as a creative, you want to be f- full of what eighteen to twenty five year old females, mm. uh, what their lifestyle is like. They're, 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 you know, if yeah. you're not aware, the kind of fashion. Mm. and things because if you're doing a tv commercial or an ad or on online you wouldn't want to get that wrong mm. um uh so there's a a lot of other peripheral information that will come through from research or information that's available that will still be required that you will refer to yeah. beyond what the main the main argument is because you're going to use that to mm. deliver the argument if that if that if that becomes yeah. clear, it's no good just putting a message out there. The message has got to engage. You know, um, people have got to attach themselves to that message in some way, see mm. themselves in that in that. And even in business to business, the same applies. You might be you you, you might be um, solving a uh, solving a problem, let's say a technical problem with your product. Yeah. Well, you've got to understand what the challenge is that, that those people are facing, mm. uh, in order to, uh, in, in order for them to recognise that you understand that challenge. Yeah. So there are triggers, there are in, little indications, little signals of that by what might appear in a photograph yeah. of the product. Yeah. The product itself might not be enough. It might be to uh, depict the the kind of scenario so that so that the receiver of the information says uh, yeah they 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 don't not only do they know what they they're talking about they understand my problem hmm. you know i'm just giving some examples here but that's what that further information can provide so that the creators have things to work with yeah yeah that makes sense uh, um because i'm thinking that um we might get a a couple of people watching this who are startups keen to just learn a little bit about marketing Mm. um i'm sort of uh putting you on the spot here but just sit and think about this as much as you need to there might not be a good answer Mm. what i'm thinking is what would your advice be to someone who's starting a business basically funds are tight and they need to do all this kind of stuff themselves Mm. you know yeah. pretty much you know using as i don't know a nephew or something to help design a logo and and mm. things like that so they don't really have the um sort of they might have some of the tools mm. um and some of the the skills 
necessary but they didn't necessarily have the knowledge to kind of direct this and and mm. and company names and, and things like that you know is there something you sort of advise people to generally follow or yes well i've been involved in that but an over an, an overriding thing to say here is that when people start businesses up um, not accounting for the fact that they might have to market those businesses to actually sell those businesses you know to sell the virtues of the business and they don't factor that into the to the kind of costs that are coming up so so often you find that there is nothing to spend on mm. so what do you expect to get from it if you've got no no money to buy you know the the, the design for your branding or, or whatever yeah. um, then you're you're possibly going to struggle to get um, uh, to get a the right advice, and a, the, the 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 right kind of solution mm. from from professionals who do this kind of thing and best advise. So I'd just say that, and, and that sounds terribly negative and terribly unhelpful. But I, I wish those that I'd tell people to get into business would emphasise the fact that um, uh, one of the major parts of that business is going to be to market it. Mm. Um, and it, it must present itself these days. Must present itself pretty well. Getting away with some, I don't know, um, uh, iffy sort of little logo or something like that mm. is not necessarily going to do an awful lot of good for them if they're in a competitive market where the other competitors look pretty professional. Mm. So uh, I, I, I say it. Uh, I say it kindly. Mm. In, in 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 a way, you've got to be able to perform out there as a business but going back to your, your, your original point and I know what you're, you're, you're trying to to get to is there a kind of you know homemade kit <laughs> um, a, a kit for the homemade marketing to, to a certain degree and there are some things yeah I mean uh, it was because what a lot of people do is just try and start up and think okay I'll, I'll have my logo properly designed when I can afford it when I've made a bit yeah. of money in my first year or something like that so what mm. a um, but but also something that um, for a lot of small startups whether you're making sort of um, you know making little bags or whether mm. you're you know growing little produce and things like that um, is to uh, uh, I think some sometimes a basic thing that a lot of people um, don't realize is that you know if you don't really know what to do with your branding but mm. you're you know then make it about yourself you know and if mm. you're so um you know if you're if you're trying to write a book then make your branding about you as the author and and, and, and what you're trying to do with that yeah. um because sometimes it's so often people miss that trick of you know what's special about your company well, it's actually them that's behind this sweet company for example mm. that's the main kind of you know driver and that's something to especially when you're small is to kind of build the business around and mm. maybe putting that in the name and things like that you kind of see it on apprentice all the time when they have small startups mm. um, and people are trying to build their own business on it like a, a good easy mm. way to go is make it bring your sort of personality into the branding well, yeah, the, 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 if it's a small business like that, then uh, the branding aficionados, aficionados, I'll say aficionados, um, <laughs> would would say that the the personality, the personality and the character of the brand is uh, a, a, um, so very often about the person that established it and runs it and mm. and and it's their values and beliefs etc that are the values and beliefs of that thing which is put on the counter yeah so mm. that close attachment there is uh, is overall a good thing um because it will feel uh, it will feel to the customer more natural Mm. You know the promises it makes will be backed up by the way it's delivered because mm. it's delivered by that person or those close to that person. Mm. So, um, like a family business, a family shop, or something like that. Yeah. Um, yeah. The kind of promises that 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 makes is because that's the way the family operate and deal with their customers and customer uh, uh, kind of customer behaviour. Um, in fact, I've got. Oh, sorry. There you go. Oh, or did have one. Have I left it at home? I may have done. 
Um, it's about customer service now. I've, I've left it at home. And it's an interesting book from an advertising point of view because mm. it gives guidelines for best customer service. Well, the, the best customer service is best uh, foot forward with brand. Mm. You know, uh, so um, in, in answer to the way I think you were going, because uh, there are many, many ways I could come at this, but let's see if this, let's see if this helps. Um, when I've talked to uh, small startups, um, I've uh, first of all, um, I, I, I first of all determined that, uh, or determined with them, have they looked at the marketability of what they've got? Yeah. What's the competition? Uh, like for it is there a market for it and how are they going to get it to market mm. because if um, if they can't demonstrate that you know we've got some fairly major problems yeah. <laughs> ahead mm. and there's a limit to what I could do to help uh, in branding and communicating them mm. um, so so if 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 that's quite clear and that's been thought through mm. and that's uh, been uh, quantified to, uh, to to a degree so that we perhaps now know um, uh, that there is a certain catchment area. We'll take an example. There's a certain catchment area that this company, say it's a new solicitor or something like that, yeah. uh, has decided that they want to market to. Mm. Um, then we can look at uh, we, we we can look at uh, what the competition is like. Yeah. Um, we can we can then determine. Uh, let's take an let's take an example. We want a point of difference. Want something that will register with those people out there that s smacks of something that little bit different. In other words, why should I come to you rather than them? Mm. Now it might be because they're a small business. That that's the the virtue of that is it's terribly personal, mm. and their competing their competing stance there, therefore might be you don't disappear into this kind of well of solicitors. I deal with you all the way through the process. You're yeah. not given to a clerk or whatever. So you'd look for a point of difference and then work on that as long as it's feasible. Mm. Um, and it was attractive so I would always look for a point of difference say right if if that's the point of difference um, and let's take another example the sweet shop mm. <laughs> all right making sweeties yeah. um, is there anybody else making sweeties in the area um, uh, where are you going to sell it to mm. if it's going to be you know in your local town for instance might be going national but let's have a look at the competition mm. how do they present themselves yeah. Um, uh, 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 it's there a point of difference again um, you know what's going to be your proposition when you go and sell it um, if there's no money and this is where I'm trying to get to for both of those if there's really no money in the, in, in the kit to do it then I, I would probably advise that they do make it feel very personal mm. that on a very very minimum basis uh, that they don't make themselves look like large companies, you know, with all the all the kind of marketing apparatus that a large company would have. Mm. Let's play virtue of the fact that this is um, a small company that's kind of doing it, from, you know, doing it from the kitchen almost, yeah. and that there is advantage in that, uh, in say the pricing or whatever. So, yeah. can you see where I'm yeah. I'm going? And don't uh, call yourself a CEO on LinkedIn. You know. Yeah, precisely. <laughs> uh, so play to your strengths, mm. <laughs> as long as yeah. they are strengths in the marketplace. But you have to look at the marketplace and say, yeah, but is that marketable? Mm. You know, do people want uh, a solicitor who sells sweets? Mm. <laughs> <laughs> I do. <laughs> oh, Offer sweets, which is even more worrying. <laughs> um, okay, uh, I would like to. I was thinking, can we get one more anecdote, but something that you've a, uh, a sort of a campaign or an advertisement mm. that you've sort of created mm. that you that was successful mm. um, was also something you enjoyed putting together that you kind of look back on fondly. Yes, uh, I, I, there's one in particular actually. Um, this was an uh, a, a electronics company, um, or t technology company, um, who uh, de developed, a, developed a product that spent six million on, on developing this product. And my, my brief um, uh, creatively was, 
uh, they've come up with a new box of tricks and we've got to launch it and it needs all whistles and bells. Mm. So I asked the question, what does it do? Don't worry about that. <laughs> well, it might be significant. Uh, can I talk to the client? Now, I'll be honest, this was someone inside an advertising agency. So uh, I, I have to say that when you, if you rely on an advertising agency mm. and you think that everybody's got uh, got a, a complete acumen it's not necessarily true so if you're a client out there mm. check <laughs> and, mm. and I was briefed uh, and, and that was the basis of the brief yeah. and I said well do you mind if I phone the client on this well I've spoken to the client mm. um, I said well I, I, I wouldn't mind just knowing one or two other, 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 uh, other facts about this um, Anyway, I phoned the client up and they said, yeah, they spent six million on, 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 on this. And it was a piece of equipment. I don't want to give any names and things away, but it was yeah. a piece of equipment that the marketplace had been dying for and they had actually invested in producing this problem. Mm. Um, and it was a projector system, uh, a projector system which would, if you put video through it, it would be high quality and if you put graphics through it, it would be high quality through the same projector system th this yeah. basic uh, technology hub of it whereas previously uh, you'd had to have two mm. one which would video and one which would take graphics at high uh, at high res really uh, high definition um, and project uh, 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 and uh, the problem with having two is that you've got to have two setups and you've got to be able to um, uh, work between the two rather than fuse. So yeah. sometimes you might have a video and you want to put some graphic overlay on it, mm. uh, etc. Et anyway, this is what it did. Didn't mean an awful lot to me, I'll be perfectly honest, at that particular point. Um, so uh, I, I, said, I said, can I, who, who do you sell it to? So, well, we sell it to higher companies. We don't sell it to end users. End users hire this kind of kit. Mm. Oh, right, okay. So how many, uh, so there must be loads of high, well, there's about, uh, probably about 12 in the UK. Oh, really? So if we launch this in the UK, we're only talking to probably, you know, 12 to 20 people, influencers and, and, and decision makers mm. for this piece of equipment. Yeah, well, that starts to make you uh, think about you might not take national press advertising or TV <laughs> commercials <laughs> immediately. Um, and uh, I said, so what's the overall plan for this? Uh, because you, if you've spent six million developing it, you know, how much does this bloody thing cost? Sorry, <laughs> how much does this thing cost? Edit. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. Uh, um, uh, and they told me, and I can't, I honestly can't remember how much it was now, it's a few years ago, um, but uh, it might have cost six million to develop, but they wanted to go worldwide. Hmm. Oh, right, okay. So uh, we ran through s some of the countries and how many of these, s uh, d d do they all have higher companies? Is it, or is it always the same way to market? Yes, yeah. it's consistent. So in America, for instance, you perhaps had 25. Hmm such outlets yeah um so going back and looking at the the, the the problem of launch i had to know some technical stuff i had to know the advantages of it and you know get to the core proposition and and, and all of that stuff which i've talked about in this uh in in, in in this podcast having grouped all that together it's then a question of uh right well we can put a message together but how are we going to, uh, what's the delivery method for this? Because um, it's got to have a bit of a punch to it. It's got to arrest attention. It's got to generate interest. It's certainly got to uh, 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 elicit desire. And uh, and then I've got to know what to do. Yeah. <laughs> so Ada comes back in. Um, so how are we going to get their attention? Just saying it's available sounds quite frankly uh, pretty uh, pretty stunning information but uh that might be the client talking hmm. 
right? They've made it. They're in love with it. It's their baby. Mm. Oh, they're going to want this. They're going to love this. But mm, let's just be sure about that. Um, so I then carried out research with some hire companies. Mm. And I went along with the client to the hire companies as well. Yeah. And we didn't say what the product was. We just said if there was a solution to that particular problem, uh, so you're kind of hinting at it, mm. uh, would that be uh, important to you? Absolutely. So the client was right. Yeah. They'd done the homework and it, it was absolutely right. Yeah. So what we um, what have created... Yes, there's some advertising to go out to, to go out across their, if if you like, their sector, mm. um, uh, market sector internationally, mm -hmm. uh, because they'd invented this thing, but they invented other products. So this is good news, if you like, from yeah. from the company. So it's a good brand. Uh, um, brand message, but the direct sell was uh, an envelope that was uh, delivered by hand by courier to a named individual who had been identified as the main, uh, if you like, decision maker on 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 the equipment. And we're on video, aren't we? But the envelope was that big. Mm. Okay, and then when you opened the envelope and took it out. It was that big. So, how uh -huh. wide? If anyone's just just listening, is uh, uh, you, what's it's about a meter, I think. About a meter, something yeah. like that. Uh, op opened up. So just unfolded. Yeah, yeah. Because this is the biggest thing to hit this marketplace, mm. like since God was a lad. Sorry mm. if there's anybody religious. Don't mean any harm by saying <laughs> that. Um, but the uh, so it's uh, high impact, mm. um, not going to be forgotten easily and yeah. buried in the in in the desk drawer apart from the else. In fact, it's going to be very irritating where to put it. Mm. Um, uh, the, uh, the the there was other uh, marketing activity around it, uh, mm. but basically that was it. With the call to action, well, they didn't have to do anything; they were going to get a call. Yeah. Right to follow up, so everything was was set up around that, and the <coughs> the the client had uh, a, a, um, a plan for uh, for complete sa complete sales of all units to all to all these um, uh, all their prospects over a five years. Mm. Uh, it achieved it in a year. Wow. Now, I can't claim that what we did did all of that, mm. uh, but certainly we communicated enough and we communicated well enough and, and generated enough desire for mm. them to be able to follow up and do what they did in sales. And, um, you know, advertising very often is just a platform from which sales can, can take place. Uh, yeah. And we certainly achieved that. But I was, uh, I was particularly pleased with that because... Um, it wasn't necessarily the message so much as the delivery system. It's still a creative solution to it. Yeah. If, so the whole thing had to come together. Mm. Um, and you don't get... Uh, I mean, I've had great results. I've sold sold loads of Mercedes Benz. I've sold loads of holidays to Disney and God knows what. I know, you know, directly through through the work that we've done um, because I've done a lot of direct marketing work. Yeah. Uh, but that was the most pleasure. Yeah, I, I had, and it was it was great fun. Imagining them opening this damn great envelope, <laughs> <laughs> wanted to know who invented this. <laughs> 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 but they uh, they couldn't have hated it too much because the sales were ama amazing. Yeah, 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 yeah. And it was courier delivered, was it? Yes, hand right. delivered. You imagine you're sat at your desk and this thing arrives to you that's so 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 enormous. <laughs> you're not going to not open it. <laughs> And those around you are not going to gather around to find out what it is. Well, you probably need, it's probably a two-man job just opening the whole thing. Yeah, it? yeah. Uh, right, yeah. okay, so just quickly before we wrap up, um, you don't have to give any real background or anything to your books, but mm. uh, for anyone looking to sort of get into advertising, advertising and, and certainly looking mm. to draw from... Um, people like um david ogilvy mm. um uh 
what kind of books do you sort of recommend that they sort of look into okay. that, that you think are going to sort of keep they're going to be sort of timeless in a way really yeah mm. well it, it, uh, 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 just a little bit of a, a an overview for that because i i read a lot of stuff about you know what's the right content for uh, for, for for blogs and uh, on, online and digital marketing and there's so so much out there now and all you have to do is google it and uh, and and you can get that information but it's because there's so much it's difficult sometimes to define what is useful so i think yeah. what why you're asking me this is uh, are there some central things you know because we <laughs> you can fill your bookshelves as i have over the years it's just a little sampler from my place at mm. home but um uh but i use a lot of the books a lot of the books for reference and just to dip in and have a look and when i'm yeah. struggling for an idea i might find something that might stimulate an idea but the core books mm. um I would say David Ogilvy as an introduction into advertising. Yes, he's a has been, but uh, so much of it is still re is still relevant today. This is one uh, one of his books. He has a book called um, uh, David Ogilvy on advertising, which I don't have here because I lent it to Mike, and he didn't bring it in. <laughs> but this is a sister book, um, and uh, uh, you can read no finer. I didn't understand advertising. Hardly at all until I read o David Ogilvy. Sim yeah, uh, can say no more than that. Another an, another writer, and uh, uh, and again, I shouldn't lend books out. Um, uh, I haven't got his core book, which is the craft of copywriting, but a guy called Alistair Crompton. Now, this is a book he wrote, which is pretty much the same sort of same sort of thing. Yeah. Um, but just, this, just keep that. Sorry, your, John. Just keep that mic in it, just a little uh, bit in front of you, if that's alright. Sorry. That's yeah. Cool. No, start on that one. Yep. Um, and Alistair Crompton was a, uh, a copywriter and creative director in London. In fact, the uh, the guy that I worked with for years actually took his job before we got together. Um, uh, uh, and so, uh, I've worked. I, I've worked with some some really high high level high level people i'm not showing off about that it's just that god you learn so much mm. from, from 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 these people and alistair crompton and i think he learned from alistair crompton to be to be mm. honest um and uh, there's a lot of help if uh, mostly about copywriting because there's so much copy out there but is it really uh, mm. is it really persuasive and effective um, or is it just filling space? Mm -hmm. um, so I would put those those two, and I, I would definitely, if you uh, if you fall in love with advertising, which I had, uh, and I'm not embarrassed to say it, uh, Bill Bernbach's book here. Uh, there, are, there there are several others, I think, but this is a kind of core book, and uh, this is about how he introduced VW into. It's about the Hertz uh, Hertz. Um, story and and others um, and gives you a real insight into the kind of creativity um, mm. that changed the face of advertising it mm. created what we have today in terms of the way we communicate through advertising um, one of the things that he created was a thing called uh, and, and, and I will just say it Mike I don't want to waffle on too much yeah. but a thing called counterpoint mm. Um, demonstrate, uh, demonstrated by what I said about VW. There's a picture of a, a Volkswagen Beetle and a headline that says it's ugly but it gets you there. Put your hand over the headline and it's just a picture of a VW Beetle. doesn't tell you an awful lot except it's a VW Beetle. Take, put your hand over the picture of the v, VW Beetle and you've got it's ugly but it gets you there. That's meaningless. Put the two together. Mm. And you've got counterpoint. So often you see a picture and the words and the headline tell you what the picture is. Mm. But it just wasted half your space mm. <laughs> and yeah. not been anywhere near as effective. Mm. As effective. So he was the forerunner of, uh, 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 as far as I've been able to track it down, to the use of, of that, which made advertising fun, more arresting, and et cetera, et cetera. So that's why, that's why that book. There are... Uh, many others. If you're getting involved in advertising, um, and you, you, you either want to go the copy route, or you want to go the design and art direction route, um, there's. Uh, if you go the the art direction route, there are books on art direction which I've I've got. But uh, one of the core things to to, to learn is typography. Mm. Um, 
uh, for instance, uh, there, there, there's uh, equations for how many words of what type size and what width of, of, of column and, mm. and what the space should be in between to ensure that you receive the information and you can store it. Mm. There's many, many books uh, out there, for instance, that are found in education where there were too many words on, on, on the line the line the lines were too close together so people were reading along and and, and not being able to read to the next line they kept going back to i don't know whether you've ever done this with a book you yeah, keep going back to the to the same line mm. that's poor typography oh i thought it was me that's no, a load off and that's what uh, <laughs> and, and that's uh, and that's not sort of if you like generally understood mm. i told you i was a compositor so i had to learn some of those things myself um and uh, education has suffered to to a certain degree so imagine an ad or something online doing mm. the same thing for your product <laughs> mm. uh, that's essential to you and if it's if, if that's happening then people are not absorbing the information and certainly not retaining it so yeah. typography is a big uh, is a big area in that yeah. and my final one and then i'll i, I promise to shut up um, is uh, a, a, a nephew of mine uh, introduced me to uh, to this um and I, I haven't read it all, I must admit, I've dipped in and out, but it's, it, it's, it's an amazing book. And uh, it's, <laughs> uh, when they zig, you zag. Mm. Uh, that point of difference, that uh, being noticed, yeah. etc., is at the core of it, mm. but it goes into to, to greater depth. And it's a way of thinking. I remember going to a talk by John Hegarty, a bottle bottle Hegarty, and he said, you, he's often asked, what, uh, how can you recognize a creative? And he said, well, we've all seen that picture of, uh, of everybody walking over Waterloo Bridge and somebody's walking the other way. He said, that's one way. He said, if you ever go to a garden party, probably the creative is not in that garden, he's in the wall garden next door, or she is in the wall garden next door having a look round. Mm. because you're curious and because uh, you, 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 you look at the world through slightly different lenses, mm. um, etc. Et um, other than that, you wouldn't know. Mm. <laughs> um, it's, I, I must admit that, that, that those are a bit, um, uh, I suppose, a bit self-satisfying for creatives to say that. Um, I don't know. And, uh, mm. I, 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 I know when I have an idea that I think is pretty good um, mm. uh, and I have a process which I can go back, which I've been talking about today, to go and examine it, what, give it what we call the overnight test. Does it meet these criteria? Yeah. So is it likely to mm. work? Um, and that, uh, that man is the one to read to mm. get to grips with that. David Ogilvy. Yeah. So wrap up now. Mm. Your services, I know you do a whole number of things from sort of, you know, copywriting to design, but you're almost a bit of a creative sort of director that can oversee kind of mm. marketing communications, mm. really, yeah. um, and work with a brand from, you know, not knowing anything about their marketing communications. Um, you can do all the research and, and carry them all the way through to sort of implementing strategies and finding the right mm. sort of suppliers to use and things like that. That's after all how we mm. how we met. Mm. Um, if people want to contact you um, for any sorts of reasons, really, how, how what's your uh, what's your what's the best email to get you on, or what's the best website to come through? Well, it, it's um, uh, I've just changed it actually. Uh, it's uh, the email is John at John New Creative, and I'm trying to remember whether it's dot com or dot co uk at the moment. We might have to edit this. That's all right. I'll be able to find out. Right. Um, <laughs> because one is dot co and dot co dot uk, and one is dot com. It's John, which is J O H N, John New Creative dot com john at john creative dot com yeah i'm 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 useless at my own marketing <laughs> 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 i need an agency um, um and yeah. so do you you know do you welcome people to chat and get involved and pick up conversation and oh yeah like yeah uh, I, I i'm such an enthusiast the trouble is i'm such an enthusiast about this not everybody else is that i can bore you to tears on it if i'm not careful um but uh, uh no if 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 anybody's if, if anybody's looking for a, a kind of bit of direction uh always happy 
always mm. happy to do that. Um, my role for many years was as a creative director. That didn't necessarily mean that I was doing all the creative all the time. Uh, I was uh, responsible for the creativity of others as as, as well. Mm. Um, and so if there's people out there who, <coughs> excuse me, uh, who uh, are, are trying to develop their creativity yeah uh, or, or need some uh, need some sort of direction in that in in that respect it's something that I've I've done when, you know when I had my own business and beyond that you know mm. with uh, more, more junior junior people or new people into the business and I actually enjoy doing that I, I was teaching uh, part-time at Salisbury University um, uh, for, for some time absolutely loved it Mm. Um, it was less teaching than kind of being there, uh, being there to uh, interact with, with with the students and, uh, and and get them on the right track for an idea, not solve it yourself, which mm. I did at first and made a mistake. It was actually to uh, to have a conversation which uh, opened up their minds and 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 and, and helped them to s sort of see a direction. Because one of the things here is that we don't want creators that are all the same. We need people that have got a different style, a different approach, see things differently. That's the beauty of it. Yeah. You know, we don't want clones of, of, of me, mm. you know, far from it. <laughs> <laughs> right. Uh, okay. Well, let's, let's cut that there.